Uh, I'm I'm gonna leave the, the sirenscape turned off for now because I have a feeling that that's what's fucking with my uh, headphone connection somehow. Because I've been using my headphones the entire day, it didn't disconnect once. Oh. And somehow during the last session on Sunday, it disconnected like five times over the duration. So I I don't know. It's it's either Fantasy Grounds. Or being in a Discord call, or Sirenscape that's somehow doing it. So I'm, I'm gonna check if maybe it's Sirenscape. Which is... would be unfortunate. But that's what it is. Hmm. I'm checking, so like, audio not going to Bluetooth. Um. No, 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 nothing that I can find about it. Yeah, no. We'll see if it disconnects again during this session, then I know that at least it's not the uh, Sirenscape being active that does it. Which means it will be something else. Oh. Yay. Fun times at the old Linux factory. Uh -huh. I do like Linux. I have a soft spot. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it's alright when it works. <laughs> Which is like half of the time. 60% of the time it works. Every, Every time. time. All of the time. <laughs> So, you guys are standing in your room above the general store ran, run by Ma Peters. Susan. Susan Peters. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a good idea to do a little in character recap of what happened last session last night even for your characters you've slept on it you've had some time to think about stuff dream about stuff maybe even think about what to do next discuss well i've got to say steven uh... Those animals being cut outside was a bit weird. It's alone. Oh, did we find a body? Yes, the, the girl. Yeah, remember? We yeah, we did. The missing girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the the missing girl with the missing heart. Exactly. Seems a bit weird. Yes, very. <laughs> yes. I I I I I I don't know what to make of it. You ever encountered anything like this? Ever heard of anything like this? In no, your I'm studies, just... perhaps? No, I'm just an architect. You're the, you're the military man, not me. I don't know. It all seemed a bit confusing to me, to be fair. Mm hmm. But it doesn't seem like normal murder, though. Like, no, if I'm back in no, Ar no. Arkham, you're reading the paper, of course, you just read about the. This person was stabbed, this person was shot. Not yes. someone's heart was taken out. Now coins is fucking me up with Sirenscape. <laughs> <laughs> Feel like something more sinister should be on there, Mr. Keeper. Yeah, I'm... Um... Yes. <laughs> there we go. Well, with your reading of the occult in the book, Stephen, do you make of all this? Could we have a serial killer or something more? Uh, well, to be honest, I don't know what to make of it, but the heart's going missing. It makes me think occult. 
But what are they using the hearts for? Uh, could be anything. Yeah, can I make like an, an occult check to see sure. if sure. I've, I've, I know anything about this? You have a 46 in occult, so let's see what happens. Come on, sleep. Is. Occult. Darn it. It's out of the realm of anything you've ever previously experienced. And don't forget, there were also a lot of animals around that also had their hearts missing. Mm -hmm. Which makes it even weirder. Well, Stephen, I'm thinking, like, is, isn't it kind of evolution with something? Like, they always talk about psychopaths. They always start by tormenting animals, but or they move on to humans. Maybe this is the same. Yes. But doesn't that usually evolve over a fairly long period of time? In this case, in this case, I I wouldn't say that those animals were murdered or slaughtered more than a week before the poor little girl whose name I've forgotten was Maggie. Maggie. I'm glad you're keeping notes. Uh, I forgot her also. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, of course, the homeless man. Maybe we should go and talk to him. Mm -hmm. Some more information I... about the figures he saw. I I don't think he uh, he would know much more than what he told us. He seemed he seemed pretty scared. True, and it's not like uh, we it's... can contact the constabulary at the moment. He's very much busy at the. Yes. Huh. But speaking of, should we tell him about our real purpose for being here? He's been very open with us. So I, I don't suspect it. Like I... this town, this town's a bit weird. It's a bit out of the ordinary compared to what we're used to. But yes, even still, he seems an honest man. Yeah, and I think. Oh, if 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 he's to it's investigate not like we... this, uh, if he's to investigate this murder, then well, he needs to the, know all the, the occult. Yes, exactly. And it's likely, I think, that it is connected to the summoning. That uh, Mr. Merriweather did somehow. It would be an awful, awful coincidence. It wasn't. And I don't think coincidences happen in this town. It's not like we've lied to mm. the uh, the constabulary. We just haven't told him the whole truth. We are here to collect the house. They're all, but. Mm. Yes, but I do, I I do agree that it's uh, we should. Tell him what we know. Do we still have the box, Stephen? Should we put it on the table and have another look at it? Because I remember the runes you saw on the wall. Maybe mm. some, like, symbols on this box, maybe. See if they're connected. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have it in, in the room somewhere. Let me, yeah, let me go get it. So which box? Which box was this? The sarcophagus, wasn't it? The little sarcophagus. Oh, Jesus Christ! There are so many handouts here. Mm -mm -mm. The sarcophagus that you get got from uh, Mr. Merriweather, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There you go. 
Ooh. Oh, indeed. Now, these aren't Latin, so this isn't... I don't know. Can... Uh, have you also got the... Uh, what's the name of the book again, Stephen? The, the Vermese Mysteries. Yes. Ah, yes. I still have it. <laughs> Uh, maybe we should uh, have a quick um, flick through it and see if we can see if any of these symbols appear. Um, as you open this yes. little this little box, you also find a yellowed envelope. That's inside it. Have we not seen this envelope before? You have not opened the box before. Yeah, we did in the diner at the start. This little sarcophagus. Or do we have a box in, with the sarcophagus in Didn't and then we? we just never open the sarcophagus? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in it, you find a deed. To a house. Loading, please stand by. Ooh. Wait, no, but then we did open the sarcophagus, but because we, we did already know about the deed. Oh, yeah, so then, then I am... Uh... Wait. It's been about a month ago, guys. Come, cut me a, but uh, then cut I, me I don't remember. I don't remember some of this. I, I, yeah, I don't remember the picture of the sarcophagus. I remember that we definitely got the definitely got the deed. Yeah, but in this uh, note it says here the translations made by Marion from the book Divimus Mysteries. So um Oh who's Marion? Marion was one of the Marion the, was, was in the occult. Yeah, one of yeah, the he was like the main in. Yeah, he was like the main Marion Allen, the main summoner. Oh, so no, we have seen this, and this is where we found the about the book, then, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Yeah, because I, I, I also don't know where else we would have gotten the name of the Vermees mm. Mysteries. Yeah, yeah, I got new handouts, so I'm, I'm not sure which ah. one you have already seen and not. So that's, that's basically it. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, Sorry. fair enough. <laughs> Just rereading the letter, Stephen. Please. Yes, <laughs> me too. <laughs> so y you have this letter. And you have this little, well, Egyptian looking mm. sarcophagus. You have a key to a house that was also in the box. Mm. Have you checked out this yeah. little sarcophagus? Well, I, I want to check it out to see if I recognize the symbols because um would i like my character recognize the the left hand side as egyptian hieroglyphs and then yeah. recognize that the other the other symbols are distinctly not egyptian hieroglyphs yeah and do those markings on the inside of the sarcophagus match stylistically with the markings that I saw on the outside of the house mm. they in some way kind of repos represent or resemble the same kind of sigil like markings Can 
can anybody read Egyptian? No. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, of course. I don't think so. <laughs> Let me check. I... Uh, no. Language other... Or is it slang? Oh, no, I don't even have a language other. Been all no. around the world. Didn't pick up any language. Well, not ancient Egyptian. Mm. Uh, can I, uh, Felix? Should we go to the the Vermes Mysteries book again and see if we see any of those symbols in there? Yes. I'm... Well, we st we started to translate it, but uh, how far did we get through this? We Sorry, have or you could some... understand it. Yes, we have some translation, I believe. Maybe just get to the thick of it and see what's in the middle page. <laughs> Perhaps we should go uh, go to the end, certainly. Ooh. <laughs> page 666. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are trying to read the Vermes Mysteries. Uh, not just that though, we're yeah. also gonna look through it to see if any like, because it's written in Latin, if there's any of these that are not Latin characters in there, to see if there's like a different part. So maybe then we could translate that page of like the explanation of what these symbols are. So then no from you. I'm I'm checking. Um, <laughs> well, what you do find is indeed at page six 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 something that looks a little like this as it's loading. point of the page a pentagram one was mentioned in those letters from Marion or was it from Rupert's I can't remember. Rupert's diary that was it yes and those symbols look very similar to what's inside this sarcophagus I even want to say that one of them is exactly the same I have got a theory. Sarcophaguses. They're like a, like a trap, so to say. Maybe we can trap this beast or whatever it is inside it. Hmm. That's uh, not a terrible idea. <laughs> the letter also mentions that whatever is needed to contain the creature or to repel it is present in the house we need to find it maybe that is the pentagram itself that repels it because wasn't it destroyed yes, it or broken yes i believe so i believe was it Rupert who mentioned that the pentagram got disturbed or broken and that it needs to be reconnected? Perhaps this this pentagram is a blueprint of sorts of of the pentagram that they used to sound this creature. And perhaps all we need to do is reconstruct the old pentagram. Well, and maybe read these words underneath. You yes, translate these? Yes, let's... Um, both of you give me an ID roll, which is just your intelligence. 50-50, come on. Boom. <laughs> Literally on it. 
<laughs> Felix, you are pretty engrossed with this Latin or Latin like words underneath this picture. Stephen, you get a feeling that maybe there is more to find inside the little black diary or diary like book that was also in the box. Okay, so let's, shall we have a look at the diary? Go, go ahead, Stephen. I'm just going to be engrossed into the Latin. Go ahead, of course, of course. We've got plenty of time do, do, to do, wait for the good stuff. Uh, do you want the, uh, the dictionary while you write it? <laughs> I'm going to try and see if I can work out by my own. Oh, spirit. Oh, it's, it's about spirits. Oh, I can see here, under vitam pentagram. It's about a pentagram, I know it. Yes. <laughs> Stephen, you open this little black diary-like book. Ooh. Ooh. And as you flip through it, you find out that you only really pretty much read the first page or two. And as you continue, you hear the voice of Mr. Rupert in your head. Mary Allen has acquired an artifact probably Egyptian. It appears to be a small sarcophagus of gold. <laughs> Inside a large piece of amber which entraps a specimen of some unknown species of arthropod. Alan is very excited as the box corresponds to a description he found in an ordinary reference volume in the University uh, Warney Library. And Alan says that in another book, <laughs> The Vermish Mysteries, <laughs> is an explanation of the powers of this box. The text says this small animal trapped in the amber is actually the host to bind a djinn, <laughs> a guide to the spirit world. Alan says the two mentions that originally there were four such species of amber contained in the box. There is no mention what happened to the other three. We are agreed and a date has been set to conduct a ceremony intended to summon this djinn. Which Alan assures us will be friendly. We have chosen the night of Saturday the 18th of March. The night before the new moon. Do you continue reading? I'm going to continue reading. You, you, yeah. yeah. I love the voiceover if you want to continue. I will continue. Because <laughs> this, is, this is gold. <laughs> March 19th, 1877. We began the ceremony as Alan instructed according to that described in the Vermis Mysteries. A fire is set in the fireplace and a pentagram chalked on the floor marked with an appropriate symbols and illuminated by two black tapers placed near the center flanking the piece of amber with its entrap spirit. The others sit in a circle while I, the designated watcher, <laughs> who guards for a malevolent spirit, sits in the corner of the room. At least I get the comfort of a chair, <laughs> while the others can look forward to sitting on the floor for hours on end. Alan throws a handful of powder in the fire, producing an evil-smelling smoke and dampening the flames, which now burn a sputtering green and brown. Those seated on the floor begin the Latin chant Alan has transcribed from the book, after nearly two hours, I see a trail of smoke circling up from the piece of amber. Its surface seems to be bubbling and melting. Can this be? Have we finally achieved success? I can see a form. March 20th, 18... 
77. You can tell that this part is written by a heavier hand. We have finished with our plans and have sworn a pact to never speak of what happened last night. We have satisfactorily explained that the death of poor Robert and in some manner the madness of Harold, the sheriff accepts the explanation of a, uh, well, carriage incident. We planned it well. Robert's neck was broken in the fall, we told him. Harold struck his head on a rock when the horse's legs broke and the carriage rolled. Would it be that, that if it was only that? For the rest of us, we will be forever changed by what we experienced last night. I will write down the true events so that they are not lost completely. The thing formed in the center of the pentagram, shapeless and nearly invisible. Its terrible voice should have given us a clue, but we were so foolish. I spoke, then Alan cast that damn powder on the gin, the dust of Ibn Ghazi, he calls it. And that's when we could all see it clearly. Words cannot adequately describe this, this faceless thing with a thousand mars. It roared and bubbled, never fully revealing itself at any one time. So terrifying was this aspect that I was frozen in place, uh, my pen falling from my nerveless fingers. Cecil and Ellen seemed as lifeless, lifeless as myself, while a short, sharp cry issued from Crawford's mouth. Robert, however, <laughs> rose to his feet, and before anyone could stop him, he stepped forward to embrace our humble guest. With his arms or those appendages that almost seems like arms, he took hold of poor Robert and twisted his head around as though it was all dull. Uh, the lifeless corpse was then drawn back into Harold's lap and that's when he began that damnable squeaking. The shrieking that hasn't stopped since, even after we handed him over to the sheriff's men. Well, we still had a chance, apparently. Adam now believes that if we had kept our wits, we could have reversed the summoning and forced the creature back to where it came from. But Crawford panicked and, mistakenly believing that it would dispel the creature, reached forward and destroyed part of the pentagram, breaking the seal and ending, ending its effects. Released from that binding symbol, the thing with a screech that could only have been unholy satisfaction was ejected from the house, disappearing out the window and as a roaring, screaming wind of boiling colors. You can turn the page and I will keep reading. Please do. March 24th, 1877. Alan intends to leave Arkham and travel to find a solution to this crisis. He said that he intends to seek out occult scholars in New Orleans. I pray successful, but my hopes are not high at that point. He insisted that I be custodian of the gold sarcophagus and not show it to anyone. What's even more odd is that he instructed me to not visit or even live in Boston. I can only guess that as to why, as he will not tell me this, his reasoning. Apart from his insistence that it is for my own safety. Marion, silly wench, still thinks that the thing could yet be destroyed, or at least dispelled, but none of us who remain have the stomach for it. No stomach for such an undertaking. I hope he can find a way to safely banish it without another of us falling to its malevolent grip. Yes, yes, I'm coming. <laughs> March 26, 1877. We now believe that the spell we cast to summon it inextricably bound the thing to the house. Alan went back this morning to retrieve some of our belongings and store our 
ritual accompaniments. He says that he heard it bumping around in the attic. Overhead. Cursing him all the while. He said that it also told him that it only has to wait us out. When we who were present are all dead, it will roam the earth freely, slaughtering and, and feasting. Thankfully, the warding signs carved by Alan during better times, times that seem now so long ago, apparently are effective and bar the thing from entry except into the attic of the farmhouse. I might be able to sleep a few hours tonight, knowing it is bound to the attic and cannot harm anyone else. I am hopeful for the first time since we <laughs> stupidly released it from the amber. If it told him the truth, then we have time to seek the answer. God be with you in your search, my friend. October 14, 1877. I've just discovered that Marion Allen is dead. And has been dead for some months now. He was murdered. Murdered. In New <laughs> and murdered. In New Orleans this, this past August. I suspect that he spoke to the wrong sort of people about the things he has seen. And they killed him. The newspaper mentioned he sarcophagus, so they may have been after the gold. That's three of us gone now. I must do something. I have already began ancient history classes at the university, so I believe I will try to research the problem at the farmhouse in that manner. Perhaps I will uncover an ancient secret of how to rid our world of that beast in my own way. There is a newspaper clipping that depicts a brutal murder at the docks which is about Marion Allen. And at the bottom right of the last page of this journal you see the names of the dead Robert Menken, March 1877. Harold Copley, August 1877. Marion Allen, also August 1877. Crawford Harris, died January 1910. And Cecil Jones, March 1919. The only name that does not have a month and date after it is Rupert Merriweather. But he did. He did. Now, Stephen, this is a lot to analyze. So let's go from the so, top. Sorry, give, give, give me two seconds. No, Stephen, we must do it now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have two seconds, damn man. <laughs> yeah, just had to sign a birthday card. Oh. Ah. Happy birthday to you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, what were you saying, Felix? Well, Stephen, this is a lot to analyze. We better take this from the start and work through it part by part. Because a lot of information has been revealed in this document that we are overlooking. One thing it's I've noticed... Well... Oh, carry on, carry on. Well, indeed, one, one, uh, the one thing it seems that we need to do for certain is restore the pentagram to its original state. And, well, find a piece of amber to trap it in. Mm, yes, perhaps. One little, little thing I noticed. 
We better ask the sheriff how long he has been sheriff. No, 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 what am I talking about? I've just worked it out. It's over 50 years ago. <laughs> no, but perhaps... Uh, perhaps he still has some documents. Well, I'm noticing... Time, but then... They handed the shrieking man to the constabulary, so maybe there's a file or something in the police station that describes what's going on with this madness. Perhaps, perhaps, it's described what he what he is yelling, but I I wouldn't put too much stock into it. I yeah, think it's it's far more um, interesting to translate this piece of the Vermis mysteries. Perhaps this will tell us how to dispel the demon other than simply recreating pentagram be careful steven you saw what happened to what was the, that boy's name in the university just fell down i think he's was he called steven as well they're all called steven they were called steven and susan and felix very popular name mm. Yes. Either way, when he read the words it's... in the Vermis, he's, he fell to the floor, as you saw. So, well, so... I I have also read it. I was also a bit unwell after reading it. Oh, Perhaps... So to do with that? <laughs> Perhaps you would like uh, to give it a try. <laughs> or... Must the time's the charm. Let's try. Right. Ooh. Stand back, Stephen. Let's go. <laughs> and I'm going to grab the, the alphabet book of working out how to translate. First up, roll me a... Oh, let's make it a library use. Library use. You. It will take a, a while. Uh, my glasses back in my pocket. Yeah, probably the Amen. better half of a day to actually decipher a lot from this book or even a, a short part of this book and the more you're reading it the more you decipher translate from this book do you you get uneasier and uneasier you feel the hairs on the back of your neck rise with every word give me it is. Indeed. No, it was not sanity. <laughs> ah. I wanted you to roll an education roll. Oh. Uh, but no, no, no. Oh. Uh. You succeeded. So you know what it is you are reading. Now roll me a sanity check. No! <laughs> <laughs> roll me a d6. No! Yes, indeed. You lost. Um... Five. Five. In bump, one bump. go, which is, I have to tell you, I know. Not very good. I know. That's that's what I'm not happy at. Roll me a D one hundred. 
<sighs> Can I spend two luck points to make it nice? I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> you read this book and you fully fathom what you're reading. And as you look at these pages, you see the words move. and jump off of the page onto your arms because you're reading the book like this onto your arms and they are you, you can see them trying to burrow themselves words letters whole sentences and after a while whole paragraphs try to burrow themselves inside you moving up from your arm towards the rest of your body You have a bout of 10 minutes where you feel like words are traveling through your skin. React I'm accordingly. Just going to tremble standing <laughs> there just looking like unable to stop holding the book but at the same time just staring at my arms as words travel up me just staring down in deep thousand, like a thousand yard stare just so your your flight or uh fight response is freeze <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> felix are you what's happening are you okay i'm just not gonna react at all can i take the book from his hands oh 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 i'm just gonna hop, grab into my vest and grab my drink oh. 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 Yes, Man, it's... Ooh, just so... Ooh. Ooh. Give me a moment, Steve. Steve. Yes, yes. Just, uh, lie, just, lie down, maybe, and have, have, have another drink. Just... Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do you want one? Do, 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 do. No, 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 no. You... You, you have one for me. <laughs> you guys just woke up, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> It's the 1920s, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's called breakfast. Now, uh, Stephen, I... I don't know, I, I, it's hard to explain. Uh, I would seem insane to tell you. No, 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 no everything's fine, Stephen. It's just... I've got to admit, uh, not everything is just as, as it seems uh, lately, like... People are telling me about beasts and that, and I could have sworn the words were coming off the page when I was reading it. This intense feeling over me. Is that how you felt when you read the book? I've never experienced anything I... like this. this is... Oh, I only, only suffered from some existential crisis at the infinity of the universe. I didn't see any words move onto my arms. I think we should read this book with caution. Like... Yes, or if you've managed to translate it, not at all anymore. Let me search my brain, Mr. Keeper of my knowledge. Did I translate the book? <laughs> um, well, I, I, I... I form a rebuttal. Do you think it's wise to try to read what you wrote as a translation? In for a penny, in for a pen now. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we should wait to read these words. Because I was in some sort of trance when I was translating it. I don't even know what I've read down myself. 
But after what happened to that dead boy, after he was reading it, maybe we should wait till the opportune moment to read. Let me say I have a distinct feeling of the man above to my right. <laughs> yes, but if we if we are going to dispel this this demon, then we we need to, we, know, we need to know everything. It's it's if if we if we move into the house and only read it then then it will be too late I think. Maybe but if it's not read aloud, you're... it might be a bit different. Did the boy in the library read it aloud, or did he just start reading a book and then just fell to the floor seat? Well, he he started reading it. Um, he didn't read it aloud. Um, Stephen, give me an occult roll. Yes. Oh, yeah. You get the idea that reading it to yourself in your head is one thing. Reading it aloud could have unforeseen consequences. Because then you would basically one could make the argument that you're summoning. So, so so far, none of us have read it aloud, right? No, none of you have read it aloud. Yeah. Oh, would, you like let, to, would you like to read it? Let me have a look at your at your translations. Hand the piper over to Stephen. Be careful, Stephen. Yes. I will put it down on the table so that I'm not physically touching the paper, and then I will read it. I will not right away tell you what you're reading, but give me a intelligence roll in your aiming to lose this role or fail this role but with an 80 it will be difficult for you I'm oh you know full well what you are reading roll me a d6 Ooh. can I do the same can I read you can certainly try um Stephen, you lose three sanity points. Okay. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, how much sanity did you start with? Steve. Yeah. So you're... Um, yeah, there you go. At the beginning of this campaign? Yeah. It, it was... I, I don't remember what I saw that with. It was something in the low 50s, I want to say. Uh, low 50s, so you didn't lose that much yet. All right. Good for you. <laughs> you are... Yeah, yeah, not crazy. <laughs> yet. You yes. read this translation by Felix, and it starts off pretty legible. Talks about history of the universe, how the old gods roamed the earth how there is more between heaven and earth. But as the more Felix wrote, the less legible it gets. 
until it's just basically scribbles. Doesn't even resemble letters and words. And this goes on for a page. And then it just stops. You're either muted or your yeah. microphone. So nothing yeah. like concrete about how No, no. So there's that's nothing concrete about how to dispel demon or creature or whatever it is. No. But what you got from the texts from the diary you could piece together a few things maybe it doesn't need to be spoken in english it should be said in latin to which we have the full oh. transcript here but but would the would the, the... The, the dispelling chant be the same as the summoning chant? Because it's very likely what we have here is is a chance to summon the creature, but will that dispel it if we repeat it? Hey, you're the expert on occult. Mm, can I make an occult roll to see if that makes sense? Sure. You want to spend 42 luck points <laughs> to turn it into a no, success? Please. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, nah, you have no idea. Might make sense. Might not. Might be that you do not really know what this whole chant is saying. Do we know if the, uh, the, the entity I'm going to call it from now, I don't know what to call it, uh, is it still in the attic, do you think? Or is it got it's got away, I think, hasn't it, Jess? Because it's as you say, there can't be any coincidences, so can it jump into oh, a I... person and this person has been murdering things? Oh, that was a cool film. With Denzel Washington, I think. What film? Ah, oh, there was this movie uh about Denzel Washington. Uh, who was oh. a detective and there was this ghost or this demon that jumped from person to person when uh, they touched uh, when a oh, possessed person yeah. touched a non-possessed person it transferred to that person I'm trying to think what it is yes oh my god um, the word Dante is in my head but I don't think it's that oh my god oh shit um, Fallen? Might be... Denzel Washington plays the Philadelphia police detective who is investigating occult murders committed by an apparent copycat killer. Uh, let's see. Has John Goodman, Donald Sutherland... Yeah, Fallen. Uh, yes, Fallen. I what? think it's Fallen. I think it's Fallen? No, it's not Fallen. Uh, was it Denzel Washington? <laughs> I don't remember. Oh my god. Demon movie. Oh shit, what was the name of the demon? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's Fallen. Okay. Fallen. Hmm. Oh, okay. Alright. <laughs> 
Azazel was so, the name of the demon. Yes, now I remember. Uh, all right, so this brief interlude. Sorry. <laughs> yes, where, where were we? Ah, oh, we're talking about cinema, aren't we? <laughs> I do love to go to the pictures. <laughs> the moving pictures. Oh, yes. Buster Keating, oh, he's a great actor, he is. That Fatty Arbuckle, he'll be uh, up and coming. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm sure that in a few <laughs> years' time we have sound. <laughs> oh, maybe. Spoken oh. word at movies. Oh, well, one can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, back to business then, shall we, Stephen? Would you like to yes. try and translate the second half? Or do you feel like it's too dangerous at the Well... You're muted. I, I don't think we have much of a choice, do we? What what else can we do? Take stock of what we know and what's what's going on in the town. So we only know about Mar Peters, but they all seem to know this house. Maybe we should ask Mar Peters. Well, it's a town. small small town. It's, Everyone knows it... each other. Oh, I... Like, I've been apprehensive about asking people about this sort of thing, but uh, maybe we'd need a bit more of a direct approach and just out with it and ask what happened oh, I, to I, the I... old sheriff. Maybe people have to be quite honest. I don't. I... Well, but. You you read the the diary the um, the group who did the summoning light to the detective the, de the detective doesn't even know that there was a summoning so I I don't think any anyone in this town would be of any help to us at this moment not in the matters of of dispelling this entity as you call it. No, I, I. Perhaps we could uh, arrange the help of of the sheriff once we know how to dispel this creature. Indeed, but I feel like but... he's probably busy at the crime scene as we speak. So maybe it's mm. an opportune moment to go and explore the house a bit. Yes, perhaps. Uh, perhaps, perhaps they left something there, Deep. forgotten about it, that would um, give us some more information. Does the oh, let's have a look. does the diary say where the pentagram is in the house or the attic, isn't it? Yeah, the attic. He's in the attic. Do we go into the attic or not? Are you asking me? No, I'm, I'm well, I'm speaking aloud. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking aloud, should I say? Uh... But we did tell the sheriff that we would wait here for him, didn't we? Indeed. Maybe explore the, the little bit of the town first. Maybe go and ask some people about some things. Maybe they know more about these mysterious deaths, and maybe they've seen something in the woods or in it. I... I think the, the potential risk of making ourselves look suspicious is greater there than the potential value we can get from any help of these uh, uh, the locals. Uh, very astute point there. I don't exactly want to be known as a murder suspect. Yes. Do 
you region that... dropped off Red Jake at the police station, right? Is that the homeless man? The hobo, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the sheriff uh, took him. Yeah. The way I see it, you have a few options. You can try and translate the Vermese mysteries and inevitably go insane in this room. Um, you can explore the town. You can try to talk to the hobo. See what he knows about the house and if he knows about this entity you could explore the house itself you know it's probably in the attic you haven't checked the basement here we have this is where the hobo was you... The hobo came storming out. Yeah. We didn't. I don't think we actually entered the basement. We didn't. The read in the door again, and it says Crawford panicked, mistakenly believing it would dispel the creature, reached forward and destroyed part of the pentagram, breaking the seal. So the pentagram does seal the creature in. Mm hmm. So maybe just rebuilding the pentagram and saying the words when the creature's inside it will seal it back in, but it's getting the creature into it. <laughs> yeah, well, well, if the hobo came from the. Uh... The basement, he maybe he can tell us some information about what may be in there before we venture up into you know where. Yes, perhaps he could also tell us if he heard anything move around in the attic at all. Indeed. Let's hope the sheriff has a deputy because he's going to be busy at the crime scene, isn't he? So there'll be no one there but. Or maybe so, that might be even better if there's nobody there and it's just us and the hobo. Might speak more freely. Well, I, I doubt the police station is completely unattended. Oh, there's about five people in this town. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, let's, 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 let's go and find out. Hop on down the stairs. Morning, Susan! <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a wee little break. Okay. Speak to the hobo. I'm gonna speak to the hobo. What did you say his name was? Red Jake. Red Jake? Or is he red? Because you always wear a red flannel shirt. <laughs> Is he a lumberjack and he's okay? Well, let's just say yeah. he works all... Sleeps all night and he works all day. Something, something, something hangs around in bars. <laughs> He is a lumberjack and he's okay. So night and he works all day. So you move out of your room and that's after midday. You've spent a lot of time in your room. As you come down, Ma Peters just gives you a bit of a funny look. It doesn't say anything, just... You can tell that she's thinking like, why are these two healthy looking young men 
sleeping in until this time. She's confused. Feel all right, Susan? Yeah, 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 we're feeling all right. Did you have a good um, rest? Yes, we've been studying, don't worry, we're not always sleeping. No, I don't sleep until this ungodly hour. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just would like you to know that this is a Christian town. With Christian values. Don't want to hear no, no funny yes, bits. Sir. Praise Jeebus. Yes, we were studying the Bible, in fact. No. Really? Touching you up read on, the our, Bible. on our Latin. Yes, I was reading. Mm -hmm. I was reading uh, the chapters of Luke. You like the Bible, don't you? Mm. Tell me twelve verses. Praise be the, be the Lord. Ex sorry. Tell me twelve verses of the Bible. Uh, 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 easy, 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 uh, easy. Without easy. using Google. And oh, fuck you. <laughs> and on the first day, God created <laughs> something the or other. heavens. <laughs> no, but Matthew and on the five, four, six. He created the light. <laughs> All right. But Math Matthew said to you, he says, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Don't let even tax collectors do the same. Matthew five forty six. See, mm. I do read the Bible. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And Jesus does say, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Oh, that Jesus was one smart feller. Shame what happened to him. Dream about it every night. Fortunate. Every night? Really? Every damn night. Oh! Pardon my French. <laughs> Dernier. <laughs> so you do what? speak other languages. <laughs> <laughs> and she just like nods to herself like, all right, that's sorted and, and turns back to her work. Oh, be seeing you. To the hobo. <laughs> Hobo time, it's time for Hobo. Basically, the police station, it's, you can't miss it. It's a very small town. General store is almost dead center. And if you're walking out, you see that just across from the road, a little to the left, is the police station. It's raining. It's windy. You hear the sign from the general store creaking in the wind. Streets are deserted. Which is weird even for this hour. It's not like you're in New Mexico or somewhere down south where they indeed do siestas around this time. Might be unsettling. What do you do? I'm gonna walk up to the uh, police station and flap my brolly and put it down. Put my umbrella by my side, it's a cinematic look as you open the door and you just see the hooded figure. <clears throat> uh, good morning, is anybody in? Uh, hello? You see a rather rotund woman sitting at the desk doing her nails and she looks up and says can I help y'all? Uh, good morning, yes, sir. Uh, Afternoon, Peter. sir. 
Oh, sorry, I've been... I had in a buck all morning. I still thought it was still morning. Time gets away from you and you're having fun, Des. Ha <laughs> ha! Anyway, uh, Sheriff Peter, he's... Was his name? What? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, uh... He said, uh, we should come down here and make a statement about the, uh... What happened up at the farmhouse yesterday. Terrible shame. <sighs> Indeed. She was so young. Her mother be her, her mother's devastated, of course. Though I have to say I was pretty gruesome, don't you think? Terrible. Terrible tragedy. Oh, I'm glad we caught the son bitch. Caught it. Well, you did. Mr. Peters brought him in. No, 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 no. That's not. Man, he he was a trespasser in our new house. My God, no, he's not the murderer. No, no, that's why we've we've came. We've came to <laughs> see if we can talk to him. See if he knows more about what's going on around it. As you see, the we've recently taken over the farmhouse, and uh, me and Stephen here. I'm F I'm Felix, by the way. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, sorry. Afternoon. Yes. yes. So, me and Stephen have recently taken over the farmhouse, and that poor girl seemed to have died on our property. That's why we've came down to make a statement because we don't want to be involved with this. And when we was taking ownership of the house. Poor man, you think was the man. He's just a trespasser. He wasn't part of that at all. We think, we hope. We Ho don't know. I'm... Hold on, Shuka. Let me get somebody for you. And she walks, she stands up from her desk. As she's walking up, aren't you in charge here? What? <laughs> it's 1920s, man. She's not in charge. <laughs> 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 she walks from her desk and you see her enter a room which you can only um, imagine is the bullpen where uh, the cops and detectives would be and you see her walk in and turn right and you can just see her like like this part of her body is blocked by a doorpost but you can see like her shoulder and her ample buttocks and you see that she leans over moves back looks at you guys nods leans back in stands up fully and she takes a step back and you see a man come into frame. I'm going to whisper to Stephen just as we're there while they're off. Just Stephen, maybe you could uh, mention that you was in the military police or something like that when you was in the military. You might uh, be more willing to help you. You're a man in uniform, you know. But oh, shush, shush, there, there, here they come, here they come. This man walks towards you with what can only be described as a purpose. Stands in front of you. This is. Can you all repeat what you just said to my. to Doris there? Okay, I'll start from the top. I'm Felix D'Souza. This is Stephen Richardson. We're. We're from Arkham, and uh, recently we've taken over the house, the farmyard, on this deed here. And I'm going to produce the deed for him. Just go. And uh, while we was taking ownership, uh, we found a trespasser, which is currently locked up in your cells right now, in our basement. Now, while we was searching the property with your your very lovely Sheriff Peter, we may have found the little girl that was up at the farmyard yesterday and he's asked us politely to come down and make a statement right 
Right. Why don't you follow me? We are we under arrest? No, well, we're not under arrest. Just checking, you know. <laughs> Why would you be under arrest? I don't. I don't I'm, I'm British. We we don't like the constabulary here, so you just hear horror stories about the American police, but. So far, it's completely unfounded. Anyway, I'm digging myself a grave, sir. Just lead on. All right. Continue <laughs> talking. No, no. I want a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks at you, Stephen, and says, What's your story? Uh, well, I was uh, with, with Felix here and with Mr. Peter when we... Uh, uh, we found little Maggie's body, and yeah, Mr. Peter asked us to stay in town, asked us to come down to the, to the police station here to make a statement, I believe. Right, right. You say. Pa Peters told you to come down and let us have a statement. No, 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 no. Your your fellow uh, sheriff, Sheriff Peter. All right. Why don't you Why don't you boys follow you, me? You don't have a sheriff Peter here. Why don't you boys follow me? And he says it this time with his hand resting on the butt of his gun. I'm gonna look at the police officer, look at Stephen, look at the police <laughs> officer, Stephen. Um, um, I'm gonna look at the police officer, Sheriff. Are you the sheriff? Sheriff is a Texan thing. It is? I was going to say, I thought it was just a country thing. We don't do sheriff in this town. We have actual police officers who actually work. Okay, oh, officer. My apologies, <laughs> officer. Stephen, are you thinking exactly what I'm thinking right now? Well, I, I don't know what to think, Felix. Let's just go into the back room. But there uh, is. <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll. Yes, lead on, <laughs> Mr. Lead officer, on. sir. We'll and he we'll takes you. a step to the side and just gently gestures you towards the bullpen. I'm gonna walk in. Do you have anywhere private we can speak, officer? An interview room or something? Because I have a very important question to ask you. Quite. Um, as you guys uh, walk into the bullpen, he falls in through behind you. Still, as you look over your shoulder, hand resting on his pistol. And he directs you both to separate rooms. Mr. Felix, please, will not you wait for me in this room right here? No, not together. I need to talk to you, officer. I know. No, I'll be with you shortly. Just be calm, be calm, Stephen. Be calm. I'm very calm. No, no, not you, Stephen. Stephen, be calm. We will be fine. I'm sure of it. I'm sure. <laughs> you boys have nothing to hide, do you? No, no, exactly, exactly. So you, you'll both be fine. Um, Mr. Felix, please take a seat in this room and I'll be with you momentarily 
Um, officer, officer, come, come closer. Come closer. Officer, officer, before you go, before you go. I, I have to admit, I'm going to whisper to the officer, I am armed, officer. Would you like me to relinquish my weapon, but poor Stephen here might have a bit of PTSD. Just set him off. Just a shell shock, you know, the Great War. Anyway, yes, yes, sit down. Yes, yes. <laughs> He looks at you and looks at Stephen and looks at you, looks at Stephen and nods to himself and tells Stephen, I reckon you're the fellow he calls Stephen then. Yes, yes, that's uh, correct. Um, I'm going to ask you to move into that room. And he points to another room, different from the one he asked Felix to enter. Certainly. I move into the room. All right. And stands in the door opening and says, I'll be right with you. And closes the door. And you hear an audible click of it being locked. He moves towards your room, Felix. And tells you now, sir, in a very calm and controlled manner, lift up your jacket it's so I can... I'm just going to pull my jacket to the side like that. Officer, if you'd like to take... It's, it's fine. And he pulls his own gun and points it at you, reaches over, to grab your gun. I don't want you to get the wrong impression, sir. So being up front with you. Take it. Okay. My hands down calmly now, sir. On the table. Are these all your firearms? They are indeed, sir. All it's right. personal protection. Not at all. Um, he walks out of the room. An officer, I've got something to tell. Oh, Jesus Christ. Bloody town. You hear him open a very heavy door. Hear the heavy door close again. And he walks back into the room. You don't see your gun on his person and he takes a seat at the table directly across from you folds his hands and says now Mr. Felix please tell me what you were doing at the crime scene Will, sir, but I need you to answer me one question in turn. The person that was taken from my property, who was he brought here by? Because that person is posing as a police officer. Which is making me highly suspicious of who was taken us out into that wooded area on my property. Well, from what I've heard, it was Constable the Police. Oh, so he is a police officer. That's fine, fine. Oh. Yes, but he works the night shift, and as you can tell, this is the day shift, so. <laughs> and from what I've seen of his report, 
it's rather suspicious that you, you in town, and a dead woman on your property. I see that it looks suspicious, sir, and under the same circumstances, if the roles were reversed, I would indeed feel the same. So you but understand I can assure my you that... conundrum here. I indeed, indeedly, indeedly, sir. But I can tell you from start that we do have a bulletproof information of regarding this. Is that we had not set foot in Ross's stone a mere half hour before the body was found, and up until the moment that we did a, a, appear in the town, you'd literally. We was not alone at any point. We turned up into town on the bus. We literally got off the bus and... No, 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 we we chartered a car all the way from Arkham. Our driver, Felix, same name, of course, you know, we got along good nicely. He's been in town all day. That was literally... We rode straight into town and by the moment that we stopped, your constable Peter met us at the house. We have plenty of witnesses of Ma Peters saw us enter the town, sir. She was the one who even directed us to the farmhouse. Hmm. How did you come across the deceased. Well, during uh, during the search of the property that we literally just taken over, as you've seen the deed, sir. Uh, we uh, had some rustling downstairs, and this is where Constable Peter actually can confirm this. He helped us down into the cellar, and out came rushing a madman that struck him with the table leg. We had to. Uh, handcuff him to the handrail and at that moment uh, he started babbling on about something in the forest something in the woods just behind the property so being the keen investigator that he is constable peter saw outside what seemed to be uh, slaughtered animals should speak but these were not old bodies uh, these fresh I feel something is gonna miss on my property, and I'm not happy about it. I want, I want the police to help me out on this matter. And this is where, unfortunately, following a trail, we came across young Maggie in the underbrush. Such an awful sight. It's a sight I will forget, sir. It's not a sight I really want to remember. Let alone lavish in it. You see light spark in his eyes. Really? Then do tell me. How do you know that this girl was named Maggie? Have you met her Mal before? Peters. No, 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 no. Mal Peter, sir. When we entered the general store, she said that a little girl had gone missing recently. And two and two together, because there's not many people in this town. It's not the bumbling city of Arkham. <laughs> I see how it is. You city folk come here and... Quite frankly, look down upon us. Contraire, sir. Contraire. Quite the opposite. <laughs> we, me we merely want to get out of the city. This is why we have the property in the first place. Didn't Stephen want to give up that sort of life, the harsh realities of a city, for a nice, relaxing, little quaint town like yourselves? I do not look down upon you, sir. I envy you. <laughs> Quite. Well, I'm sure that your friend will be collaborating your story in mere moments and he stands up walks out closes the door 
most of I the just go, do, where... I get, do I get my gun back afterwards? No. He okay. doesn't respond at all. <laughs> <laughs> Moves over to Stephen's room and opens the door. It takes place across from Stephen. This is... Now, son. My friend, Mr. Felix, there, he spilled the beans. I'm... I know you're guilty. Why don't you just confess and get this whole thing over with? I... I, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. There are no beans to spill. Slaps the table. Don't play coy with me, boy. <laughs> I know you, you two, moided that poor innocent girl. Cut her, cut out her heart. Where is her heart? Her family is livid. Absolutely livid, I tell you. Well, I can imagine. Might be as well. What did you give this but poor weeping family some respite and tell me where her heart is? I, 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 I don't know what to tell you, good sir. I, you've got the wrong impression. Give me Stephen a let's see psychology roll or psychoanalysis whichever is best for you well neither of them you want to spend luck just 29 <laughs> not just, that much just 29 <laughs> man just 29 it's only, tw it's only a few it's nah, just 29 nah, i'm good why not i'm good all right um, you get the feeling that this, oh, sorry, this man, this, this cop is, uh, he has a glint in his eyes. He absolutely thinks that he is onto something here. Even with your failed oh. role, you can, you can tell this, like, he thinks you are guilty. Well, well, sir, I... I can't tell you where, where the heart is. The only thing I can tell you is, is how we, me and my friends Felix, arrived in this town. And and how we arrived at the farmhouse, but that is that is about all I can tell. Do you wish to hear it? Sure, tell me. Oh, as I'm certain Felix has already told you. I wouldn't have heard from your we... mouth in your words. Yes, I'm it's an introduction, good sir. I'm getting started. We acquired a deed to a farmhouse here in this town from a mutual acquaintance. We took the car from Arkham, chartered it towards uh, to this town. We stopped at the general store to ask Ma Peters uh, the exact location for, for the house which she gave us the direction that it was somewhere outside of town. We took the car towards towards the house. We parked there. Half a minute behind us, I think. Officer Peter arrived. Together with him, we, we entered the house. We heard some uh, noise in the basement we opened the basement and some mad hobo came 
flying out, assaulted Officer Peter. We restrained him together. Then we asked why he was trespassing on our property. He started rambling about a creature that followed him through the woods. And he mentioned that he heard the screaming of a little girl. That would have been the night before. So the night before we arrived even in this town. And obviously because we are concerned and we had heard from Ma Peters that some girl went missing. I believe there was a poster. I'm not sure how the topic came up, but she told us that some, some little girl from the town had gone missing. So we went out into, into the woods, me, Felix and Officer Peter, led by the hobo, followed back his tracks and yeah, then we found a body of a little girl and I asked Officer Peter if he recognized the body and he confirmed that it was the missing girl, a little little Maggie. So what you're telling me that Officer the priest told you that this little girl was Maggie. Yes, yes, I, I, I asked him if he, if he recognized the girl because he seemed, he, he, he seemed very, very upset, like, to the point that he, he might have known this girl, because ob obviously it's a gruesome sight, but it's quite different if you are acquainted with the, uh, with the victim. How long have you known and... Mr. Uh, Mr. Felix? Um, let me count back the days because we only met through a mutual acquaintance who was on his death deathbed when we got the date. That must have been four days ago, back in Orkham. Well, death just seems to be following you boys around, isn't it? Well, we got uh, we we got an. an... Uh, a letter from um, a, uh, a Mr. Rupert Merriweather uh, asking asking us to uh, to come to his deathbed, where he he gave us um, this deed, and, and we 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 didn't know each other before, and I think Mr. Mr. Felix is. A, a a cousin or, or a distant nephew of um of Mr Mr Rupert. Uh, I I knew I knew uh, I knew Mr Rupert professionally. Hmm. But I've I've been told that uh, Mr Rupert died died a, a natural death that that night. Which hospital was this? That would have been the hospital in uh, in Arkham. It is I I don't know the name, but it is opposite of the Miskatonic University. I I'm not quite certain if it is a part of the Miskatonic University. Well, I'll tell you, um, you, the player, that you know that it's St. Mary's Hospital. Right, okay, so St. Mary's Hospital. St. Mary's, and... Just, ma'am, this, this... Mr. Rupert. This Mr. Rupert Mayweather? You told me? Mayweather. 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 So he shed his mortal coil about four days ago he 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 passed away yes 
Natural death, you tell me. We 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 wanted to visit him in the hospital the day after, and that's that's what the nurse told us. Yes. Why do you do you know do you know this man? I know, but let's just say if I call this hospital right now, they can verify that this man died of natural causes three days ago. Yes, three days ago may have, may have been four. Yes, that's uh, that's what the nurse nurse told us. Yes, please feel free. I'll be right back. He leaves the room where you were in, Stephen. Um, both of you give me. A listen roll. Felix, nice. please put a tick on listen. Oh, I am. <laughs> um, Stephen, you're you're probably just just too far away. Uh, Felix, you hear. This man said, yeah, hello, operator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please pass me through to Pop Eaters. Bit of silence and. Yeah, pa, Pa. Got these two city folk here and. Reckon I might be onto something. I know, I know, but. It all seems mighty suspicious. Well, I guess I could just put him in holding for the time being until you get back, but... I reckon, sir, I reckon. Alright, talk to you soon. Yeah, love you too. <laughs> Sorry, sir, that I said I'd love you. You just slipped out. <laughs> you will have my my badge and, and gun in the morning. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that last part was a joke. Um, he... You hear the... An audible click. Probably the radio, and you hear him pick up a phone, dial zero, I think it was in the 1920s, or is it dial one? <laughs> Operator, St. Mary's Hospital, please. Arkham, yeah. Sure, I'll hold. Yes, hello, this is Officer Funny Business. I'm calling to inquire about the death of a certain Mr. Rupert Merriweather. Uh huh. Uh huh. Really? Uh huh. Well, thank you very much. Now, what are you wearing? Any? <laughs> he hangs up. <laughs> A few seconds pass, Felix, and you hear the door open to the room that you are in. And the same man, again, takes place in front of you. Officer. Mr. Felix, I've been talking to your boy there. He's a clever one, isn't he? Oh, he's astute. I'm besought with him. Quite. Quite. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna do something that I think would benefit us both here. What's that giving your badge to Par Pieces in the morning? <laughs> now I'm gonna put you in holding cell one. Now, now, sir, calm down. It's for your own safety. No, I am calm. What is the charge, sir? It's for your own safety. Sir. My safety? Yes. Right now, you have half the town looking for somebody to blame. But the Moida. Poor Maggie. At least six people are out looking for a murderer. You're new here and... Quite frankly, your story raises a bit of suspicion. The timing is... To say the least... Suspect. Two strapping city boys from Arkham. Arrive in town with the deed to a house that has not been used in 50 odd years. That same night, the body of one of our most prized citizens has been found on that same lots now you according to my colleague Betty over at the reception you boys were adamant that this vagrant had nothing to do with the death of poor Maggie quite sure you understand the predicament that puts me in if not this man then who it be Susan Ma Peters <laughs> she no. wouldn't do such a thing <laughs> no sir fucking hell Sue <laughs> what happened <laughs> <laughs> she just dropped a load of plates in the cupboard. <laughs> so as I started talking all the time, she's looking at me. Sorry, <laughs> Susan. Susan. <laughs> no, officer. See, you have it quite the wrong way. See, here's the thing. You say you're saving us, and there's people looking out for a murderer, and you're trying to blame us. Shouldn't you be out looking for the murderer? On the contrary, my good man, I think I found him. You know, as he walked right... What did, what did right... Stephen Billy tell you then? Because I can tell you, he told you the same story I just told you. There were similarities and discrepancies in both your stories. Well, what's the discrepancies then? Uh, for one, you told me that... Ma Peters told you the name of the girl but he said that you only learned the name of the girl after you found her so which is it mr felix well if i reach into my other pockets you'll like to find nice and i take out my flask nice flask maybe i got a few little intricacies wrong yes it is true that we only learned the name from officer peter my mind isn't exactly what it was before, was it? Let's just say I wasn't as exactly sober time. And he leans in and says, Do you often draw blanks? Or misremember stuff? Events? Because of the drink? I could confiscate this right now and book you. I mean, I forgot that America is under fucking thingy at this time period. <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, A dry spell. 
No, they, they banned everything, didn't they? They banned all the alcohol. So what was it, the great? Oh. You know what I mean. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that followed it. <laughs> banning alcohol. Banning schools? Banning alcohol. What was it called? Prohibition. <laughs> Damn it, it's just well. Um. <laughs> From 1920 to 1933. Now, officer, I can assure that even though this is illicit material, yes, you can see I have a debilitating mental condition here. It's an addiction. I can't help it. I get the shakes if I don't have my drink the drawing blanks only I only drink under stress and let's just say the last week or so hasn't really been the best week of mine I lost a family member a few days ago that's how I came in possession of this house so you took to the drink of course drove out here I didn't drive myself, sir. He As I say, I want to get away from the city. Takes the flasks and puts it in his jacket pocket and says, "No, no, let me, let me just one more tipple." Damn it! <laughs> Got you now, Mr. Felix. Oh, Jesus Christ. Got you now. <laughs> now you have my, my most vulnerable, sir, so ask away any question you feel will get the answers that you seek. But I can assure you I had nothing to do with the little girl's murder. How do you know she was murdered? No. <laughs> <laughs> you ripped your own heart out. <laughs> well, Mr. Felix, um, I would like you to roll me a psychology roll. No. No? You don't want to spend no. 18 luck? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Um... <laughs> Even with your failed psychology role, you can certainly tell that this man is giddy with excitement. And he stands up and asks you to stand up and face the wall. The watch charge. <laughs> He taps his breast pocket. Do the First Amendment rights still feel free in here, officer? Would you mind? <laughs> uh, remind the keeper what is the First Amendment again? <laughs> Freedom of speech against uh, the government. <laughs> That anything I say cannot be used against me. <laughs> um, <laughs> he looks you dead in the eye and says, <laughs> Keep on digging, son. Just keep on digging. I put my hands against the wall. It's because I'm British, isn't it? <laughs> I thought that was old blood. Like it was over a hundred years ago, for God's sake. The Americans, you never forget anything, do you? So, yes. <laughs> you know, we both know this is grade A bullshit and won't stand up in court. <laughs> <laughs> but look, your fingerprints are on the flask now. You handed it me. <laughs> See, we both can try, sir. You can certainly try. And I'm try. just digging a big hole. <laughs> <laughs> just get it over with. <laughs> and he <laughs> grabs one of your arms, puts it behind your back, grabs the other. <laughs> Cuffs you <laughs> and moves you into a holding cell, which is 
what happens next, I should say, is that he walks into Steven's room and says, Mr. Steven, I would like you to ask, I would like to ask you to stand against the wall for me, sir. Hands firmly on the wall. Am, am I being arrested? <laughs> am I free to sir? go, sir? Am I free to go? <laughs> am I being detained? <laughs> am I being detained? <laughs> <laughs> I just caught your partner for bootleg bootlegging alcohol. Is that so? Quite. No, I'm gonna assure you I'm, I'm, I'm not involved in, in any legging of any boots, sir. <laughs> Funny guy. Well, even though you were running with this alleged criminal, which means you are allegedly guilty by proxy. Can I call a lawyer? You can. Do you have his number? I'm sure the phone operator would put me through. Uh, you can make a call to a phone operator. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good, man. But in the meantime, Mr. Stephen, I would like you to put your hands against the wall. I'd still like to know precisely on what charges I'm being arrested, sir. Complicity to a crime. Bootlegging. Smuggling alcohol during prohibition. Well... No. Sir, I won't ask you a second time. Wait. Third time, sorry. No, no, let me... I'm putting my hands up. All right. He steps towards you. You feel his hot breath in your neck. As he takes one Ooh, arm... Officer. <laughs> Squeal like a big boy. <laughs> Puts one hand behind <laughs> your back. Puts the cuff on, put the other hand behind your back, puts both cuffs on, walks you to the holding pen. Where there's three holding cells, one holds Mr. Felix de Souza. Number three has your name, Stephen, written all over it. And in the middle one, gleaming with excitement, cackling to himself is the hobo you know now is named Red Jake and he says so <laughs> we meet again and we'll see you next session hey